Last week on Horror in the Hive, Lena Clark returned home to Saw Hill Springs, a quiet old town buried in the heartland of the South. But instead of a joyful reunion, she was met with flames, both old and new, resulting in the keepsake factory burning to a crisp, Clayton Wilkes unconscious in a hospital, and the sweet old Tom Weston dead. Was it foul play? What sparked the fire? And what secrets does this town conceal? Tune in tonight to the sickly sweet continuation of Horror in the Hive, Episode 2, Flickers. Oh, Loretta, my dear, you look positively radiant. You're the spitting image of your mother. I remember her wedding day to Clayton like it was yesterday. Oh, the entire town came out to celebrate, and the flowers, all sorts of flowers, were blooming that day. I don't feel radiant, Darlene. I feel like me. I don't feel those butterflies in my stomach are just giddy at the fact that it's my wedding week. And yet, I can't help feeling like something is wrong. Oh... And with Daddy in the hospital and Shawson and poor, poor Tom, maybe we should just call the whole thing off. Loretta Wilkes, your daddy is proud of you and of your marriage to Bo. The Hampfords are such a strong family and your Bo loves you. Does he though? Everything just feels wrong. Knock, knock. May I come in? Well, good afternoon, Lena. Come on in. Lena! We're just finishing the last touches on Loretta's dress. Isn't she lovely? Oh, Loretta, you look wonderful. It's so nice to see you again. Lena Clark, it's been ages. I would come give you a hug, but Darlene's pins would no sooner stab me than I am almost finished. Have a little patience. Your dress is gorgeous, Loretta. Thank you. It was my mama's. Your mother always was so very lovely. I remember her smile. Yes, she was always smiling. Daddy never could stay mad at her and she never seemed to get mad at all. There, Miss Loretta, the blushing bride-to-be, your dress is finished. Now, Lena, what do you think? Do you think Bo will like it? Loretta, you're as lovely as a dandelion. Hello, Darlene. Well, Lena, that'll be your Aunt Anna. I forgot to tell you, she was coming by to drop off some honey for the wedding. Miss Loretta here has requested the finest honey cake this side of the Chattahoochee River. And of course, I'll try. (laughs) After all, it was my honey cake that old President Shaw's mother-in-law's grandniece's babysitter's friend's housemate personally requested. Oh, Darlene, everyone knows your honey cake is the best. Hello? Darlene, I've got that honey here. Well, let's go greet her, shall we? Darlene! Anna! Hello, Aunt Anna. Lena? Anna, you are an angel on a scale to bring this here honey over. With the wedding in a couple days, I gotta start preparing those dishes now. Lena, I see you've made yourself comfortable here at the Bees Hive Inn. You know you are always welcome back home. I trust you had a pleasant journey? I did. In fact, Tom escorted me the whole way from the train station like a gentleman. Shaw rest his soul. Yes, it was horrible what happened. I always liked Tom. He took such good care of the bees when he'd come to visit. In between helping out here, of course. The poor soul. I know he's finally with his sweet Mary Louise now. He missed her something fierce these past few years. Say, Anna, Charlie, Bo, and Brighton were planning on stopping by for dinner. Why don't you stay? I've got plenty of food. Oh, my dear, you are too sweet, but I really can. I left a couple things I need to get back to at the house. Lena, would you care to accompany me back? No, thank you, aunt. I am an independent woman now, remember? I make my own decisions and I own them. Yes, well, I can see that. 
But if the world turns on you and leaves you destitute, always know your independence has a warm bed under my roof. I appreciate it, Aunt Anna. I'll make sure to remember that, if it's ever needed. All right, you've got the honey, Darlene. Let me know if you need more. And Loretta, congratulations on the wedding. I know it will be a wonderful celebration. Just make sure you don't let Bo see that pretty dress you've got on. I hear it's bad luck for the groom to see the bride in her wedding dress before the ceremony. Thank you, Anna. And I wouldn't dream of it. Well, she seemed to be in a good mood this morning. No, that's just Anna. Woke up on the wrong side one morning and never fixed it. Well, to be more honest, she's been like that ever since Lena's parents. Ever since I came to live with Aunt Anna. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm so sorry. Lena, Loretta, your dress, it, it's lovely. Oh, sure. Oh, don't look. What in the pull is with that all about, Charlie? No idea. But hello, my darling, darling. <laughs> oh, Charlie, <laughs> not now. Well, I hope you boys are hungry, Lena. Would you mind fetching Loretta? I've got all the fixings just waiting for y'all to show up. Um, yes. Yes, I'll do that. Sounds delicious, darling. Say, was that Anna I saw leaving just now? Oh, yes. And in her normal mood, too. <laughs> At least her honey is sweet. Boys, go set the table. Lena! Lena! Lena doesn't feel well, so I told her to lay down. <laughs> Stars, that woman leaves the shawl in southern heat for a little while and can hardly stand it when she comes back. Oh, sh she doesn't feel well? I should go check on That poor girl, she just probably overdid herself yesterday. Well, with her journey and then Tom. Any word on daddy, Charlie? No, my dear, just that he's stable and expected to wake up soon. I just don't understand that fire. What caused it? And what impulse was that smell? I never smelled anything like it before. Smell? Brian has the strange notion that the Keepsake Factory fire had a smell to it. Which is completely idiotic. All fire smells, Chief. Glad to see what capable hands are in. No, what I'm concerned about, the jobs we lost. This town is small enough. An event like this is sure to send even more folks away. Why, the Callaways are packing up as we speak. Frank and Cat. And their kid, too. Hazel, isn't it? Yes, Hazel. I babysit her often. She's a good kid. Spoke to him this morning, and they- There's things like that that caused it hounded out. Saw Hill Springs is dying. But I don't know how to fix it. Well, my father knows about the fine is already in negotiations with the investors about funding for its rebuilding. Keepsake universal cargo holders are a necessity. Up on those scales, the world couldn't do without them. I know he'll figure it out. I wouldn't be too sure of that. This town has a way of taking even the best and sucking the life from it. I just wish there was a way I could, that we could, I don't know, if I could do something. Harley, honey, you can't fix it. Besides, this town has enough gossip for a harbor full of tea. What can you fix? For starters, the grumbling noise coming from your stomach. Darlene's right. Enough talking shop. Let's eat. I am starving. Uh, <clears throat> We apologize for the interruption, but we bring news directly from the front lines. After an intense 30-minute standoff, the dispute over territorial claims in space is no closer to being resolved. The newly elected President Victor Shaw is expected to address the nation of Shawland tonight to discuss potential strategies moving forward. Please be advised, this will result in increased air raid drills as well as potential sugar rationing. We encourage all of our listeners to continue listening in, but from a safe place. Preferably a nuclear bomb shelter. In other news, Bob's bubbling bomb shelters have seen exponential recent growth and are expected to ring the stock exchange bell on Tuesday. And now, back to Horror in the Hive. I always did love these flowers. Urbana. Vinia. <sighs> Even the oleander smells like home. Darlene said I could find you out here. You never did have to look too hard. You were away for a while. Oh, he's observant too. 
Lena, what's wrong? You used to be able to tell me everything. Why are you getting married, Bo? Married? The wedding? Is this what it's about, Lena? You're not jealous, because you know that I- Absolutely not. How could you say a thing like that? Lorraine is my best friend. I, I'm happy for her, for you, for for you both. I'm, I'm happy. No, truly I am. Who are you trying to convince? No one. I, I just, never mind. Lemon drop? You're confusing me for a candy. Don't you remember the lemon drops? Of course I remember. You offered me a stupid lemon drop every single day until I agreed to go fishing with you. Positively ridiculous tempting me with my favorite candy. But it worked, didn't it? We came fishing right around this spot, too. Perhaps. Shouldn't you be off with Loretta? Nah, she's working on wedding plans. Besides, she's been pretty distant lately. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Quit it, Lena. Quit what? Putting on this show, this ain't you. You live in that city long enough and suddenly turn your nose up at everything and everyone you left behind. I don't even recognize you anymore. You son of a scare. I mean it, Lena. This ain't you. What did you do? Sell your soul to go live it up in the city for just a glimpse at President Shaw? Or maybe his brother? Why are you even here, Lena? The wind, of course. I'm here to support Lorena. Okay, now, actually, why are you here? You can't marry her, Bo. What? Don't marry her, Bo. And why not? Because I love you. I realize that now. I came back to tell you. Lena, I asked you to marry me. I love you. And you turned me down. You left in the middle of the night for the city. No note, no letter, no answer. You left. You turned me down. How can you waltz back here and claim you love me? No one who loves someone could do that. I never said no. Your actions said it for you. This was a mistake. Good night, Lena. <laughs> Lena, come quick, Lena. Oh my soul, that, that's a dead body. That's a, who is it? I, I can't see them in the dark, but that's a woman. Who? Qu quick, help me turn her over. Oh my shot, it's Darlene. Darlene, Darlene, can you hear me? No, oh no, oh no, Darlene, wake up. I, I can't find a pulse. I can't find a pulse. Her, her lips are awfully blue, Lena. I, I think she's dead. Are you buzzing in your seats yet? The bee's hive's owner, Darlene, is dead. And with no answers, no one to turn to, and a town ready to take its secrets to the grave, we are left with only more questions. Who killed Darlene? Did it have something to do with Tom's death? Who does Bo really love? Can you figure it out before the citizens of Sawhill Springs? Tune in next week to the penultimate episode of Horror in the high.